Dexter plays Gemcraft, Frostborn Wrath from Games in a Bottle. Welcome back to Gemcraft, Frostborn Wrath. We're wrapping up here and I wanted to cover something else. So you've now you've finished all of the trials, you've finished all of the journey runs, you've finished all of the endurance, you've killed the boss, but you want more power. Well, you can do that. You can get your wizard levels up to some disgustingly high levels. And if you want to do that, this is going to be the video for you. Let's talk high-end XP farming. So there is a whole art to this. I am not going to be able to hit this thing right on the head for you, but I'm going to show you everything you need to know so that you can yourself work yourself up to the point where you're a master at Gemcraft. So a few things to note. When look, doing this, some people have already done a lot of work trying to figure out the very best ways to deal with stuff. You've heard me before talk about my skill distribution. You've heard me talk about talismans. You've heard me talk about traits. Well, we're going to get into some of the specifics and I'm going to share with you the resources I utilize to get to uh, that information. So let's first talk about some of the resources. I'm going to jump into a variety of websites for you, and I want you to be able to go ahead and find these yourself as well. There is the Extreme Endgame Guide to Gemcraft of Frostborn Wrath Edition. This is going to go into all of the details as to why you do or you don't want to pick something, where you're going to get your XP. Primarily, we're going to get XP from enraging things, so we're going to want to really crank up our enraging sockets. It's also going to tell us, in our talismans, what's the priority? Plus one to all skills. You've heard me talk about that before, but also XP gain, things that give you ice shard, leeching, white out duration, and freeze duration. Those are the keys. So when we look in here at our talismans now, things have changed. We talk about how we make these little lights go on, which gives us bonuses up and down and side to side. We're not as concerned about that anymore at this level. What we're really looking for is... The bonuses. So you can see, for example, here I have plus one to wrath skills. That's crap. I want to get rid of it as soon as I can. But here I have plus one to all skills. It's at the very bottom, just above the red line that says shape change cost. It says plus one to all skills. You want every single one of these to have plus one to all skills. In addition to that, you want to have some other bonuses as well. And depending on the location, internal, side, or corner, you're going to have different things become available. For example, here, you can see within there, I have freeze duration as the first line. The fourth line has whiteout duration. The, uh, what is that? Eighth line has 6% mana leeching effect on enemies in whiteout. I have a 2% bleed gem effect on enemies in ice shards. I have ice shard shreds armor, which is really no of no value to me because I'm not worried about armor. And I get the plus one to all skills. And then over here, I've got, uh, not only plus one to all skills, but from the top down, you'll see I've got some uh, maximum whiteout charge. I'm skipping over the things that don't really matter. XP gain, 25%. Uh, what else is in there? Max freeze charge, mat, max bolt charge. Those are okay. I might find better. 100 rarity is the maximum you're going to find. Okay, so that's talismans. Let's go back to the, the to our little chart here and see what's next in here. It's going to talk about mods, in-game mods, Wealthy, Spell Prep, Wasp, Deep Learning. If you want to know how to get these, I have a guide that I think is pretty good. So go take a look at that guide on how you can find those. But what that means is that once you find a code, you can use that code all the way down here at the bottom, type it in along here, and when you unlock that code, it'll give you a mod which comes up up here. I have unlocked all of the mods, and I have a few of these things on. In fact, I think I have... Do I have Omni Beacons on? Yeah, turn off Omni Beacons. So what they're saying here is that you want to have wealthy monsters. You want to have spell prep, which means all your spells start fully charged. Wasp-filled gem bombs and uh, deep learning gems. The deep learning gem is not as important because after the first few... Uh, levels you get in it, it pretty much goes back to what the standard leveling is as well. So it, it doesn't really matter that much. Okay, so that's what they want to see for mods. If you go further down, there's some graphic options you can change. So force minimum visual settings on. 
and toggle render mod, uh, monster bodies only. At the beginning of this, when you're at the thousand or so, you, you don't need to worry too much about this, but you're going to want to do this eventually because there's just going to be so much crap on your screen, you're not going to be able to deal with it. The next they're going to talk about maps you can choose. And what they've done here is they've highlighted the, the maps that have the best starting stats for the mobs for XP gain and for mana gain. And really, it has to do with armor. If you want to really look into it, go ahead. But just note that if you go in here, you can see here are the places we're going to do this. I'm going to be doing a test run, and I'm going to be doing it over here in the red zone. So you're going to see that, or actually, I think I'm doing it up here in the orange zone. But you'll see how it's going to work uh, from there. Next thing, if we keep going down, it's going to talk about traits. What traits do you want to use in your mission? So if we go in here, I'm going to do... I was did, I'm starting up with the W fields, and if you remember, when we went back on the medium guide, I went back through and I said, hey, just keep running through these things and do them as best you can to get as many points as you can, because the, the difference is pretty astounding. So in the beginning, it was like 150 in high endurance, and now I'm up to 151,000 in high endurance, and I just did a W1, and I had two point, uh, 235 million experience. So we're going to do W2 next. So that way it'll allow me to show you the traits. So here they're going to talk about the traits. They're going to tell you you're going to have an adaptive carapace up, dark masonry up, insulation up. And the reason why I'll, I'll go through some of these, the adaptive carapace, by increasing the number of uh, the, the damage reduction that takes, you're going to be hitting these things so hard anyway, that this isn't going to be too much of an issue. And once it becomes one, you're still, it gives you the chance to keep hitting things with the mana farm. So it helps with the mana farm. And it gives you some extra points. I think you get around seven multiplier is when you max out on your talisman drop rate. And you have to be in endurance. If you're in journeyman mode, it won't work. You, you have to be in endurance at the max rarity. Dark masonry, again, I, I've talked about this before. We can drop walls down and block any potential spawn of, of uh, the beacons. Beacon farming in Gemcraft Chasing Shadows was a thing. Frostborn Wrath is not. You just don't get enough XP for the effort. So don't worry about it. Block them. You don't want them. Insulation puts up uh, shielding. So everything's going to come in with 12 shields. Still, we don't care because they're going to run across our mana farm. And a hit on a shield is as good as a hit on a creature when you're sucking out mana. So it doesn't really matter. In fact, I like this because I'm going to get more mana out of a critter. Max Swarming Domination. We still want to have a lot of critters on the board. And th with Swarmlings, this is something you might want to tweak up and down depending on where you're at at some point you might have to start turning it down actually i think this becomes more of an issue at the higher levels and you have to turn it down than at the lower levels it's kind of an inverse i put in some hatred uh two reasons i put in the hatred i, I cranked it up a bit just so i have some more hit points that i have on my creatures so that i, I have more that i can suck out for mana but also i did this because i wanted to get the achievement of having six or more on something to, to, to finish it off I've also maxed out jump giant domination here. It's, again, this gives me guys that are going to be very survivable. I can get a lot of mana out of them, and uh, that's going to be a good thing. Plus, they go slowly over my mana traps. All good. In addition to that, both the giant domination and swarmling domination have achievements within that is if they're set at 12 and you survive, 50, 100, 200, 300 waves, you get achievements. So you'll get some more skill points out of that. We're going to max the overcrowd here. Again, more critters on the board, the more mana I can get. We're going to go ahead and max out strength and numbers, which again gives me some extra uh, non-destructible armor. I don't care because I'm doing traps, and traps go with the ignore armor. Big deal. And then I'm going to max out my ritual. This is all going to give me an 11.2 XP modifier with uh, 85 to 100 rarity. And I'm going to do something now. At this point in time, you should be swimming in, in uh, your shadow course. I am not swimming in shadow course so much because I have maxed or tried to max out my new rarity 100 uh, talismans. But I'm going to go ahead and do this little plus sign here. For 100 shadow cores, the next one that comes in gets plus 10. So it could be 85. If it's up to, if it's 90 to 100, it'll get 100. I'm going to do this four times. I'll have at least four talismans. And so this is one of the ways you can hunt down your plus 100 talismans. I know we're talking a lot. We haven't even got into the game yet. Let's keep going. 
So the next thing we're going to talk about, we've just talked about all the rituals. If you want explanations, you can go back in here and take a look at why. Uh, we have combinations. So there is a way to combine gems to maximize effect. So let's talk about gems. When we talk, we're going to come back out of here for a second. When we talk about skills, you'll notice I'm going to be using blue gems to slow things down in a lantern going across to my mana farm. And I have no points in blue. What the hell am I doing? There's a maximum effect you can have on blue. 70% speed reduction is the max effect you can get. And it's very easy to get just by creating, I think it's like a level 16 gem. Boom, done. You throw it in a lantern, good to go. The only thing you might have to worry about is uh, speed. And with a little bit of amps, you get, this, you get enough speed that everything coming across your mana farm is slowed. You don't need to put any points into that. We're not going to use poison at all. We might use a little bit of armor tearing, but that's only because I might be using it on a tower trying to kill the ritual stuff coming in. It's not worth putting points into Okay, so that's why we aren't doing it that from, from those two points of view. We are going to be doing a bleeding gem. But again, we can get a really good bleed without putting points into that. At some point, you might want to consider that, but we're not going to be doing that. Okay. Now, we're going to go into the next area, which is just how we mix gems. There's a weird mathematical deal going on in this game where if I just upgrade... I do not get the best special effect as if I play games in my upgrade. And that's what they're talking about right here. If I do two gems together to get a level two gem, add a gem, add a gem, and then upgrade the gem, I will get far more leech out of that gem than if I just did an upgrade and an upgrade. And since my mana farm is all about leeching and not about damage, I don't care about doing the regular upgrade. I want to get the best I can get for the mana out of the leech, which means I'm going to do something called gem weaving. That's going to require us to either do some really bizarre kinds of combinations, or I'm going to add in an API mod for quality of life that does it for me. And I will show you how to add that. System at systemic approach, we just talked about this. This is going to go into the whole thing, but just understand that combining gems is an art. And it's not the same for leech as it is for crit as it is for bleed. Okay, so now when we get to the actual battle, they're going to talk about how you're going to set this thing up. Uh, we're going to avoid this at the moment, but just be aware that setting up your farm is, is important. So you can see here they've got the blue lantern here with, an, with catching nearly everything going into the mana farm so that everything coming to the mana farm goes slowly and leeches as much as it possibly can. And then they've got a bleeding lantern here that covers stuff just coming into the kill zone that boosts the amount of damage that they're going to take through their armor with the crit gems. So that's generally what you're talking about. You want to have your mana with the blue and you want to have your crit with the red. All right. Next, we're going to get down there. You're going to talk about phases. In the beginning, I, I think you're probably as interested in finishing a field as you are just getting XP. You want, you want to have enough stones coming in on your wave that you can do a, a good solid endurance run. But there's going to be a point where you're not going to want to finish the runs anymore. And that's what they're going to talk about here. In the beginning, monsters are going to come in. You're going to, you're going to end up soaking up mana, mana and you're going to just kill them outright. Eventually, you're going to get into the point where you're going to just keep investing in your mana farm. And then eventually you're going to get through. And that's when you're going to want to start building up your kill gems to kill stuff off. At some point, this stuff should never get to your orb at that point, is what they're saying at the at the higher ends. You're going to want to just keep upgrading your mana farm, keep your, your gems, your kill gems, relatively in the same area of, of, of cost. There are formulas. If you really want to get into it, I'm not going to go there. <laughs> but once you get to the point where things look like they're about to get through, that's when you start downgrading your enraging gem and you do that until you get down to a point where it's, you don't want to go to no enragement. If you get to no enragement, you're not getting enough XP to make the run worthwhile. But once you get down to a point where you're not getting enough mana, what they're suggesting at that point is that you sell off your mana farm and you just invest all of that in your kill gems and you finish off whatever you've got, especially the stuff that was enraged, and then you just end the, the mission and go back in again. So there's a maximization of time effort in how much how long you're going to play the 
the the endurance run. You don't you're not trying to finish. You're just trying to get the maximum amount of XP. And when you have to start de downgrading your gem, there's a point where you just bail. Okay. So let's talk about modding. We'll come back to modding. Actually, let's talk about the bleed and the slow. So we talked about the slow gem max is 70. We talked about the bleed. The bleed also is going to be beneficial for weaving. The slow, not so much. So don't worry about slow uh, weaving the slow gems. Okay. Um, there is the, the spread between your amps and your towers. I typically just say stay at around two or three. But there's a maximization here of how far you go. What they're saying here is if you look at your special ability, if it's between 15 and 18 percent, then your amp should be five below where it's at. But if it touches up to three other gems, you should add three to that. So it should be a minus two. There's a lot of math here. We're going to avoid that at the moment. So now let's talk about modding. Uh, modding is going to give you uh, the ability to do three things here. I'm only going to pick two of them. Gemsmith and Autocast. The Gemsmith does the automatic weaving for you. The Autocast will automatically cast your freeze, your uh, slow, and the uh, shards. Okay. When you want to get this, you can come in here. You can click on the Gemsmith. You'll also find this one here, this, this Bezel Mod Loader. You need that as well. So click on Bezel Mod Loader. You'll come to this screen. Now, it can be kind of hard to understand how you're supposed to install this. So I'm going to walk you through it as part of this, this video. So on the side over here, you see releases. You want to pick the latest release, click on it, and it will come down here and it will give you, and actually let me, uh, I've done some before. You'll see the zip. Go ahead and click on the zip. It's going to download it, save it off to wherever you want. I'm going to show this to you in a folder. It's here in the Bezel Mods folder. I'm going to put it down here in, uh, in my downloads. Right, that back here. I'm on my channel work, come back here. There we go, downloads, okay? So I'm gonna move it in there because I don't wanna cluster up all my other stuff. All right, we'll close that. So now that I have that done, we can do an install for that. And what that looks like is if we go into our download file here and we open it up, we will see these uh, options in there. Once we've got the, the downloader here, where we're gonna go is to, we're gonna jump into Steam do a right click on your Gemcraft, come into Manage, Browse Local Files. This will give you the your location of your files currently for Gemcraft, which are going to be under Steam, Steam Apps Common, and Gemcraft Frostborn Wrath. You want to copy over the Bezel Loader, the App Diff, we're going to do a uh, Control, and the Cougar at 64, and the Mods. Okay, you want to copy that all in. Uh, I have to think for a second. Yeah, I can do that here. So we'll copy it here. Uh, you won't have to replace files because I've already done it once, but I'm going to do it again. And then what you'll do is you'll just double click this apply diff. This is going to open up a uh, Windows Protect. You're going to run it anyway. It's going to go through a batch file and it's going to execute the stuff and then it's going to delete the files that you don't need. So you can see there went the, th the, the three files I copied in, the apply diff, the bezel loader, and the, and the cougarette all gone. Mods is left, okay? And if I click in Mods, we can see some other stuff in there. The next thing we're gonna do is if we go back to this guide, we're gonna click on Gemsmith, and that'll take you to here. Here's our, the Autocast and the Gemsmith, uh, Gemsmith there. So again, on the side under Releases, click on Large Recipe Update, click on the, uh, SW, the SWF, so you can come down here and say, wait, that's an executable. Are you sure you want to bring this in? Yeah, I'm going to keep it. And then I'm going to open and show in file or show in folder. There it is right there. I'm going to come back to that mods folder that we had. And I'm going to copy that in. In fact, in this case, I'll just move it in. Yeah, replace the one in there. I'm good. So now we've got the, uh, the, the, the gem force in there. Okay, that's this one here. Large recipe updates it says there's got that. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to click on this autocast. It'll take you back to GitHub as well. Again, on the side, click on the first release. Click on the autocast, whichever one is current for our release. It's going to give me a warning again. Keep. Show in my folder. Open back up to that mods folder again. Drag in the autocast. In my case, I'm just going to move down because I like to keep things clean. Okay. 
So now I have these three things in here, the bezel loader, the gemsmith, the autocast. The bezel loader is used to make sure these two say I'm working and up to date. So you'll need those in there. Now you're not done. The next thing you're going to need to do is you're going to need to go over to percent app data percent. This is a very familiar place for most people. This is where you do your Minecraft mods and some others. We're going to come in here and do this com Gaiab games GCFW Steam. Double click that. Double click local store. And now you'll see some saves. You'll see the autocast. You'll see the loader. You'll see Gemsmith. You need to come into Gemsmith and into recipes. Okay. There's going to be one example recipe in here. If you don't do this, it, the whole weaving won't work for you. Now go back into, we've done the uh, thing. You'll find that there's also a link for gem recipes. In here, you'll see the releases doesn't work. What you'll end up doing is doing a code, download the zip file. Okay. There it is down there. We will show in folder. I'm going to move that sucker. Actually, I'm going to open up my uh, my download folder. Where is that? He's a load, downloads. I'm going to move this guy in here. I'm going to double click on that. And uh, this folder has all of the various weaving recipes you're going to need. There's a leech for here. Here's all the various leech weaves that you can do. Each one that goes up is more expensive than the last. For me, I will show you what I've done. I've copied over from there into the recipe folder of these ones alone. I've done the lowest one I can find, which is eight, and I can go up to about 64 right now. So you can see there's a whole lot more over 64 than the, these are starting off in the millions. So yeah, or billions maybe still. So that's going to be your recipes. Now, once you've got your recipes loaded, you're pretty much good to go for that. Now, the last thing we're going to do is autocast. Again, when you click autocast, you'll come into, uh, let me go back one. You'll come into the screen. Again, you can click on the side for the official release. I think we've already done that one. Once you've got the autocast in there, you're all done. At which point you can start up Gemcraft and these things will all be loaded in for you. If you've added, you can actually do something if you're in here and you're, you've already started your endurance mode, we will we'll be able to utilize these very, oh, look, I got a thousand. Well, you'll be able to utilize these. And if we take a look, for example, under, put out a gem, and I put my hover over there, you'll see at the very bottom in red, it says Gemsmith, and it says recipe name. And I'll be able to manipulate through here by doing page up or page down to go through the list of recipes that were in that text file. Okay, so for LC is the leech combinations, the CC is the critical combinations, and the BC is the bleed combinations. Okay, so that's going to be how we're going to be upgrading all of the uh, different ones. So, for example, if I come down to the leech and I'm going to do, I think, let's see, that's 5,000. You can see the combine, the combined cost. It's three up from the bottom in blue. It's 5,000. It's about all I'm going to be able to do. If I hit the home key, it'll upgrade. Okay, it's done all of the combinations for me. Now, you might not believe, but I'm going to throw out a five here. So this, this gem here costs 2,847. This one costs 5,084. So if I upgrade it, 5,855, 5,855. These are the same cost gem, okay? If you look at the damage, you'll see 430. You'll see a lesser damage here of 399. So shot per second can be a little bit less, but that is fine. We're going to be in a, a trap, and once you're doing this at high end, you're going to be maxing out the fire speed of the trap. So it won't matter that the shots per second look like they're smaller. You're going to be firing as fast as it'll go. Uh, you'll actually see that if you stick it into a into a tower or an amp, but you won't see it if you put it in a trap. That doesn't give you that, that message saying you've hit the max. But if you look at the mana drain, 20.55, 22.71. Every time I do this weave, I'm going to continue to expand on the leeching so that the leeching is more and more effective for the mana I've spent when I weave. Okay. Now let's go back really one more thing before we continue out of this. And let's take a look at the next thing. 
If we take a look in the community guide, it will, there's a point uh, up the top where it'll talk about skills. And if you click on it, it'll take you over to the optimization of skills distribution. And this is where I get my skill distribution. Now, if you're into math, this is heavy math. <laughs> it'll blow your mind. But what you're really looking for here is this table. This table is a, a good if you want to get like every skill point, you can go here and take a look at a very ugly form of it. But this one, for example, I am at, I think, uh, around 7,000. So here's the, the best distribution of points, assuming that I have 25 plus one to all skills. This is how I should distribute my points. And it will give me the best effect for my points spent. Okay, so we're min-maxing here. So now that I've done that, I'm actually ready to play. Oh my God, really, holy smokes, finally. All right, so I wanna get a curve somewhere. I can't get the best, this is not the best field for doing a, a mana farm, but we will give it a try anyway. Let's do that. And we'll do that. And in fact, I'll put one of these in, oh my God, really? Okay, first of all, X, X, get down to one. Bomb this tower out of existence to get the hell out of my way. And then we're going to throw in some amps. Now, eventually, we will surround this whole thing with amps. Okay. And then next, I'm going to create a small place where I can put in my... Let me take a look at the amps of capability. Uh, I'm probably going to want to put it right here. One, two, three. That's ideal. And we'll throw in the amps here. So that's my kill thing. You saw me do this before. Four, five, six. So let's put an orange there. Okay. And now if I go here, I can do the page up and down. I'm looking for the crit. And I'm going to go 5,000. Home, home, home. Okay. And now you can see that the next one I do is going to be 186,000 mana. Okay. I already did this over here, so let's just duplicate this guy. And you want to do the same weaving on your amps. Now I'm going to make sure that this is going in here. I'm going to duplicate one of those. It's going to go up there. I don't want to forget it. And we will continue to surround this with amps. Eh, that's fine. All right, so we've got all that done. And these are all grade five. I'm going to go ahead and see if I have, I don't have quite the mana to do the upgrades here. I'm not going to worry about it. Now, I could put in a lantern right now, but I'm not going to do that because it's not going to be worthwhile to me. I'm going to kill things before they get in there, and I don't want to do that by accident. But do remember, we have to worry about uh, the, the beacons coming in. So it is worth the time to come in here and block this out now. Okay, I'm going to do that really quick. I'll be right back. Okay, now that we've done that, we might as well go ahead and get started. Let's go make this running. And you'll see that as soon as these guys come in here, Boom, you can grab more stuff. Now I do have, I need to do this. So let's talk about autocast. If you do control one, you'll see a little, see, see that says right there? Ex entered marker placement mode. And if I do a left click while I'm in there, it'll remove that for that marker. So I'm doing control three, one, two, and three. So I've reset all of those. Now I want to put freeze here. So I'm going to do control one. I'm going to right click here. There we go. The marker's down here now. I had to go out outside of the thing there. All right. Then we're going to go troll two, which is slow. I'm going to right click up in here somewhere, which will probably be like right there. I'm all going to troll three and do the same thing. So now two, three are going to fire off here. One's going to fire off here when it's ready. Let's go ahead and keep moving. Get some points. Now I'm going to go back to the walls because I didn't have enough points to finish off the walls. I think I should have enough now. So let's go ahead and finish that off. Okay, I've finished doing all of the walls. Let's keep going. You can see most things aren't getting through here and you just saw the autocast go. Let's take a look and see where we're at. We need 187,000 to upgrade that. And we need 186,000 for that. These are good, but I can upgrade these. Am I CC? Yep, I am. So let's go ahead and do home, home, home. 
trying to make sure I keep these things going. A few things are getting through, and that's going to be all right. All right, am I at the point? Yep, I am. So let's go ahead and do a home here. And you can see already my mana going up quite quickly. And I'm going to keep doing this over here, too, to get these guys up. So anything bleeding through will get stopped. Now the next thing I'm going to see, you can see next, my next record upgrade is, my god, 5 million. And I actually did an error there where I, oh, now here's something. I missed a couple spots. So let's go ahead and do, do a tower back here. I'm going to pull out this thing here. Blow that thing up. And then we'll put a wall in there to fix it. Now I don't have to worry about it. I've already got a tower over here. Put a wall in to fix that. There we go. Good. Fixed. All right. Uh, so we're letting this come up. Game points. But now what I can do is I can do page up down to try to get to a lesser cost. Let's do leech. There's a leech of 64328. All right. So I can still now do upgrades. Let's do that again. One point something million on these. And you can see that my mana is going up quite quickly in the background. And I'm not doing use, I'm doing M, or uh, I'm doing home. Okay, now I've done that twice, I'm gonna come back and get these once. All right, so now if we look at one of these, let's take a look at this one here, for example. I'm, I'm gonna leech 2,000 mana for every hit. You see my skills going up quite quickly. So I can go back here and do a, a, an upgrade. But I see a guy coming in. I want to get him. Where are you going to go? Uh, where am I going to put my tower? To get you. I'm going to want to put the bleed over here. So I'm going to put the tower right there. Boom, he's dead. Put it back in. All right, and then make sure I have my upgrades. My, my spell enhancements. Now, where was I on the thing? I'm going CC8. Home. 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 And then come back and get these two. Okay, so it's 11, that's 7. Great. And how are we doing here? Uh, 6. There's 6 there. And it looks like I can do some more upgrades. So why don't we do that? Uh... Make sure I'm on leech at 60, at 8. There we go. And then home. Home. All right, I'm going to go ahead and drop my lantern in this time. Let's go ahead and take a look at the amps. Lantern could go on either side, but again, I'm trying to keep my bleed down. What are you doing here? Did I duplicate you at some point? Go away. Uh, we're going to go ahead and grab a red, and now I'm going to go ahead and go out. I'd go up to the BC 32, I believe. Actually, I could do 64. Let's do that one. And I'll duplicate it. And 
And let's go to BC8. Oh, BC32 is the last, the least I could do. Okay, upgrade that. And then I'm going to go ahead and wait for this to come up. There it's up. And I want to make sure, see now I've, I've changed my radius so that it's going to just cover things coming in here so that as soon as they get in here, they're going to be, they're going to be hit. Okay. Now I do have another area that I want to do an amp for. I want to do a lantern. And I don't have a great place for a lantern, for, but that's going to be fine. I'm going to stick a lantern right there. I'm going to put in two amps here and here. And I'm going to create a level 12, 16. There we go, 16 gem. And it's 58% slower. Then we'll create two more. And let's see how we're doing here. I'm going to there. So you can see I'm at 59%. Let's go ahead and upgrade. We want 70, 65, so it's 65. We want everything coming in here to get slowed. So I'm going to do least affected. I'm also going to do least affected over here. We do it 67 almost there and my mana up here is kind of high so i'm going to stay there let me go back here and do my mana where's the pc lc8 there we go i need 86 thousand hey here's my first achievement So now I've hit the 70% max on the blue gem, so I'm not worried about it anymore. But, uh, so I got a guy floating around out here. You gotta go. Bye.
Okay, I've just killed my first spire, and I have to pause right after that because he will take out walls, and I need to make sure the walls go back down. That's all I'm doing right there. Okay. All right. All right. So we have uh, <laughs> picked up a number of things. Uh, we certainly have got all the thousand uh, thousand level. I've got 
uh, the max swarming giant waves for 50, 100, 200, and 300. I have the twice the steepness, uh, kill 170 monsters while there are two wraiths in the air. And I've reached 5,000 monsters with special properties killed through all the battles. And then I've got a number of high level things plus the 100 fragment, which is good. These first four all rolled low. Uh, this was like 86 because I, I got a plus 10. There's an 87 and an 85. So, eh, thanks, G. But I did pick up another 9,000 Shadow Cores. So that's a high-end run. Um, not absolutely optimized, but pretty close. And hopefully this gives you a guide on how to do your own. So thanks again for joining me. Take care. Bye-bye. Ooh, ooh. 150 levels? I'll take it. Creeping through the shadows and the corners of your mind. I go where the wind blows. I run, but I don't hide. I hear the call of the wild. Whispering the name. No, I can't be tamed. My heart belongs to the night. I'm alone, I'm alone, I'm a, I'm a lone wolf I'm a lone wolf I'm a lone wolf I'm a, I'm a, 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 I'm a, I'm a